Good morning again. Today we will read the scripture through cross-culture readings, and hopefully this effort can bring us new perspective and further understanding of the scripture. And we have experts in this room now, so I'm a little bit nervous, but hopefully I can survive. <laughs> yeah. There are 16 Aboriginal tribes so far recognized by Taiwan government because their language, cultures, and pattern of textures and symbols are original and distinguished from one another. There are still 32 tribes on the waiting list to be recognized officially by the central authority. Amis is one of the 16 tribes. Today, I would like to share two, inter two interesting stories from the book, of just, the book of Genesis of Amis. The, the Journal of the Anthropological Society of Tokyo, Japan, published an article in 1910 titled, Daiwa no Pioma Banzuku no Zonku no Zonkuse Ichiban, which means Group 1 of the Pioma tribe in Taiwan collect these stories. Once upon a time, there was a couple, Sabato Luku and Bawa Haibu. They climbed down the golden stairway from heaven to the mountain Tawayan. Gura and Nakao are their children. One day, a vast flood come. Gura and Nakao jump up to a wooden mortar. They drift for a while and finally dark into mountain Dagasan. They live there afterwards, have their children and offspring, and they start to call themselves Amins, which means human, we the human. Also in ancient time, there was a very handsome young man whose name is Eder. He married a woman who was very poor. He lives with her and her family. And one day he said he would like to visit his relative in his hometown. The handsome man, Eder, revealed that he is son of God and he must return to heaven. Heaven is his hometown where he was from. That is a place that a pregnant woman could not go there. His wife insists on going with him. The son of God, the husband, asks his wife, never say a word or make a sound when you climb on the stairway toward heaven. You must be quiet. However, his pregnant wife was too tired from climbing up the stairway and took a huge breath when taking a break. Either the son of God, the husband, heard it and kicked down the stairway. His wife fell and died. After that, there is the rainbow in the sky. The rainbow is the stairway that falls down from heaven to earth. Amis people called it the trap of Eder, the trap of husband. You may not be surprised that women are still the head of the household in this tribe till today. This is the story behind that. Before Jacob's dream and the story today, there was another critical incident happening. Jacob set a trap and earned the blessing of the firstborn son from his father, Isaac. Esau was supposed to be the person receiving that blessing. But Jacob went hunting and faked his identity and finally got the blessing. Both Isaac and Esau were shocked after they found out they were cheated. Esau hated Jacob and would, and would have liked it to kill him after Isaac's death. Jacob escaped from his home and while it was on his way to his uncle's Laban who he never met. Jacob was on his round. He was alone by himself. 
The Bible says, Jacob, taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. Scholar told us the place here is probably not an ordinary place, but a shrine, a location of the temple. Jacob entered the sacred zone and picked out a sacred stone for his night's nice stay. This is not a coincidence. If you are in the wrong, any protection from the divine could mean a lot for you, even just for one night. In Jacob's dream, he saw the angels of God ascending and descending on the stairway. A stairway or a ramp is a vital element of Mesopotamian temple towers, ziggurats. The deity was thought to appear to communicate to the worshippers from above the towers. The stairway can link between heaven and earth, and the temple on the earth could be conceiving the axis. Jacob was in that temple and axis that night. Sacred Peter was an important element of the ancient worshiping, especially in Canaanites. With idolatry, Jewish rabbi Abraham Ibn Israel think that the sacred pillar was prohibited only if they were erected to the honor of other gods. More likely, a midrash that seems in this practice a vintage of an early form of worship that was later prescribed it. What made this story different from other Babylonian, Mesopotamian, and Canaanite story is that the Lord Adonai Adonai, not other gods, reveals him, her, and themselves in, in front of Jacob on stairway above the temple tower in his dream. This is the first time Jacob encountered this God. Adonai Adonai, the God, promised Jacob the patriarchal blessing from Abraham to Isaac and now to Jacob, to himself. The, God, the Lord promised what Jacob wanted so much. More importantly, this God pledged to be with Jacob wherever he goes. The Bible says, and I will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Jacob responds and testified, Surely the law is in this place, and I did not know it. How awesome is this place! This is no other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. In verse 18, Jacob did a liturgy of worship by anointing a stone and making in a sacred pillar, and he gave that place a new name. Lars was the original name, but the new meaning for Jacob is a place where he, un- he encountered God, a place of promise and protection, a sanctuary, after the name Bethel was given to Lars. This city might be near the common boundary between Joseph and Benjamin. That location was also land of Hittites, where it refers to a territory of Syria. The audience of Book of Genesis are across different time period, but for those Jewish people who were exiled to Babylonian Empire, Jacob's dream and experience are pretty important to them. They were captured by a foreign power. They lost their kingdom and privilege and even their identity. They tried everything they could do. They also tried to claim the blessing of others and assume that they could make a difference. But no, they are still prisoners for another country. It was that very tough moment God appeared through the common element used in different religions, especially from the dominant power, the Babylonian and the Canaanite temple towers. The God of Israelites appeared to him, her, and themselves, to the people, 
and provided protections and comfort. It was full of surprises that this God seems not care about all the wrongdoings. God care about the footage, foot, uh, footed, uh, fugitive, just like those on their runs and the exiled Israelites. Later, Jacob was given a new name and identity by God. You should no longer call by Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with human and have prevailed. For us, the reader and the audience at our church, United Church of High Park, in 2023, I think there are many different meanings today for us. We are now worshiping in this place, this sectionary. This is a place where everyone is welcome and people can find their protection and need. Last week, our senior pastor, Reverend Hills, mentioned the incident. Our progressive rainbow flag on the church main entrance was taken away by an unknown person a day after the Chicago Pride Parade. It was the second time the same rainbow flag went missing in the 18 months since we became open and firming congregation. We, did, we declare here our congregation, this space is a safe place for all God's children, including lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer people. We put that progressive rainbow flag back in the past Wednesday. By doing so, we continue to send a strong message to our community, who we are and what we do in this sacred place. Some of us who read the church weekly newsletter might have known one of our denominations, the United Methodist Church, is experiencing another conflict regarding accepting LGBT people, ordaining LGBT clergy, and affiliating same-sex marriage in the church. So far, there are around 20% of the Methodist Church have voted to leave our denomination because these 6,000 congregations do not want to treat all God's children equally. Our, God, our church belongs to the Northern Illinois Conference, and nine of us, nine of the congregation, have left for the same reason. The last national wild conflict in the Methodist Church was about the slavery and abolition in the 1840s. They made that the church split it into two larger bodies, one in the north and one in the south. And now we are expecting many LGBTQ symbolings to be on their run. They are running away from a homophobic church culture and the place of hatred. Are we ready to be one of the sanctuaries that provide our LGBTQ symbolings, protections, love, and comfort? For some people who remove the rainbow flag from our church main entrance, might see the rainbow flag as a symbol of, of disgrace. But for us, it is a sign of covenant originally be between God and Noah, and now between our church and all God's children who carry various God's images. And if you notice in the table in the back, we have these. This open and affirming statement of United Church of High Park. We agree on this statement last year at a congregational meeting because we commit ourselves to all people of God, especially in the high power community. We encourage you to bring one this statement with you and have a conversations with the people around you in our neighborhood. Let them know what we are doing here in trying to respect all God's children that we all made in God's image. We have these 
duty and obligation to continue these conversations. As, as a ecumenical bodies, it's our responsibility to hold each other accountable. Sharing the message on this statement will be the first step. If your friends, they claim they cannot read English, don't worry. We have Koreans and Mandarin versions in the back. Bring all three with you and share with them. Remember in the Gospel, the kingdom of heaven is like a master seed that someone took and saw in his, her, and their land and field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and become a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. From Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13. I would like to close the message today with a brief conversation with a lady at the open breakfast yesterday. Some of us might new to this idea. Open breakfast is our church. We host a breakfast once a month. Welcome everyone from our community to join us. We share the food, we cook together and drink. We build a community in our fellowship hall. Oh, I welcome. And this lady came yesterday and he visited us for the first time. He told us that he, she always walked around our church, but yesterday she saw a blackboard on the entrance and she walked in and she joined the breakfast with us. She also told her friend to join us. We'll do this open breakfast not alone. We'll do it with other churches in Hyde Park. Because we know one of us might only can sow a tiny seed, but if two of us, there are two seeds, three of us, the three seeds, then we will see not only one tree, it's a forest in Hyde Park. And this lady told us that he want a copy of the upper room. And one of us just gave her the upper room. She wants to read it. And she have her tiny card and come down uh, the stationery and went out from the ramp. And before she went out, she told me that we have a little free library outside our church. She always visits that place and the book enriched her life a lot. Before she left, she said, and I quote, say thank you to everyone who prepared the breakfast and hospitality. This is indeed a place of God, a place of love and warmth. It's a message we received yesterday. Hopefully we can continue this message and know the dream is quite different and we can have the dream come true in our life, in our daily life, in our congregational life as well. Amen.